Detecting and responding to threats in the cloud is harder than doing it on-prem. Even when you do have the visibility you need, legacy security workflows weren't designed for the speed and complexity of cloud environments. Cloud-native security solutions from ExtraHop are purpose-built to spot threats across the hybrid attack surface, provide detailed investigation steps, and help you automate response. Request your 30-day free trial at securityweekly.com forward slash ExtraHop. Welcome back, everyone, to Enterprise Security Weekly. Is your open source code secure? We were talking about this uh, webcast on the previous segment. Learn how to verify your code during development. Uh, I'll be talking about some container security stuff, reducing your attack surface. <coughs> and Synopsys will be on <coughs> to talk about, um, <coughs> excuse me, not coughing uh, and choking, uh, but talking about SAST and SCA. Securing the source code as you're writing it and your software inventory as well. Uh, we've also got a webcast coming up with Signal Sciences. Register for all of our webcasts by going to securityweekly.com forward slash webcasts. Uh, let's see. Terry McCorkle is here with us. Uh, Terry and I have not spoken in some time. It's nice to have him on the show today. Terry, is, of course, is a highly diversified and resourceful leader with over 20 years of experience in information technology, information security, and program leadership. He is currently the founder and CEO of Fish Cloud. Terry, welcome. Thanks, Paul. Happy, happy to be here. Nice to have you, Terry. So um, what uh, went into uh, creating uh, your own company? So th this actually stems back from when I was doing red teaming uh, for the Air National Guard and for various companies that I had worked for. Um, really, what it came down to is we were always successful with phishing attacks. And um, one of the things that occurred to, to me as we were doing these assessments, and, and one, there was one particular time uh, that we, I was actually, uh, we'd actually had a successful phishing attack. I was on this person's machine and I was watching what they were doing and how they were reacting and how they were asking for help, but not getting it. And really it came down to, we need to do a better job of helping people provide them tools. And, uh, we need to do better for the individuals that are being targeted, you know, give them better ways to respond themselves because, uh, the way it basically is working today is a lot of security teams aren't able to respond fast enough to help the people that actually need it. Now, Terry, in that particular case, the, the person realized they were fished and that something was happening, but yet they couldn't get somebody to help them? That's right. Well, they're exchanging emails with the IT department or the security teams. And it, it, a lot of times what's actually going on kind of gets lost in the pile of phishing emails that are coming in, right? So how, how does a security team today, especially one that's on tight resources, how do they determine what they need to pay attention to? And how does a person, if they've actually fallen for it, how do they notify somebody properly and get the attention they need? Interesting. So how, how do you do it then? <laughs> well, I can tell you how we do it. Uh, first of all, I think it's really important that people understand this is, uh, this is, it still needs to be a layered approach and you still need web gateways. You still need the email gateways that are working uh, for you to, to filter out most of it. Um, our approach is to, we actually built an endpoint solution that fits into the user's environment. So it actually integrates into the browsers, integrates into email clients and really just gives them a real-time indicator. So uh, as, as you're browsing the internet or as you're looking at your email, we scan it real-time, look at the links, look at the context, and provide feedback to the user by highlighting the links green, yellow, or red. It's just like a stoplight. That's, that's how we do it. Um, I think what it comes down to, though, is from a phishing industry perspective, we need to start relying on users a little bit more than we have been and giving them better tools so that it's not all on the security team. And training has been important. We've trained people, but uh, any job you go to, if you go get trained, usually you're given a tool or something to really help you uh, with that training. And I, th I think there's just additional room to improve uh, how we're helping people with phishing. Yeah, so, I, I, I think that that blended approach between, yeah, you're going to train your users, but you got to give them some kind of tools uh, as well, because you, you don't want to train them or do some awareness uh, campaign 
uh, that's going to be stale and outdated, right? You don't want your users, uh, the goal being to have them be security professionals where they can look at a link and pick it apart and look at all those different artifacts, right? That's what the tool is right. for uh, that, that augments training. So, yeah, I like, I like that approach. Yeah, yeah, I think, I think the, the other important piece of that is that when you're a, a lot of times what they're what companies are doing a day is they're doing a simulation and that's really just a point in time. So the other piece of this, if you can give that real time protection or that real time uh, monitoring for the employees, then it's a matter of responding quicker. And it's it's really about having that real time data. When are people actually getting fished versus and what's actually getting to the desktop? Um, the other thing to think about phishing is it's largely been an email problem, but there's a huge shift right now to social media, to chat, to text messaging. We have to start looking at other forms of tools as well, because phishing is not just an email problem anymore. It's coming from all sorts of different angles. It's refreshing to hear you say that, Terry, because a lot of the anti-phishing technologies are still very, very focused on email, right? And they, they do recognize the other threats, but they're still very focused on email. And I'm like, well, at what point does the protections or something continues to change on the email front where attackers start to shift, right? And we know that they're going to shift to wherever we don't have protections. And to me, that stuff like Facebook Messenger or Slack or whatever the case may be. So, yeah, Absolutely. Yeah, I think one of the challenges we've seen with the gateways is that we know stuff is getting through, right? We know that's kind of like the old school technology. I think the bigger challenge is how how do you make it really uh, uh, easy for the user to understand that this is phishing, right? And and we talked about you know some of the awareness training and other stuff. It, people really don't understand. So how how do you effectively notify? users that something looks suspicious what what are some of those t techniques that you're using terry in your product to really make it easy for the user to understand look this doesn't quite look right right then that's a good question so in in our case our approach is to integrate into where the user is working um, so we do that with a series of plugins and then we actually have an endpoint agent that provides essentially think of it as a hub and spoke so you can have a plugin for any application uh, and essentially the plugin provides that real time communication to our back end that's constantly scanning it. It checks for uh, all sorts of links categories. We are looking at what's good from an Alexa million standpoint. So we're bringing in a lot of additional data sets beyond just blacklist, whitelist, and then analyzing them based on categorization. How many times have we seen it? Uh, and we also give them the ability to, to vote. So we're bringing in user context. Putting all that together, that creates a real-time streaming service. So anytime the plugin sees a link on the page, it'll actually highlight the link using an overlay with basically an indicator of green, yellow, or red. Um, the additional capability is we also let people right-click on any link uh, and check link status and it'll or link safety, and it'll actually go back, uh, unshorten the link, tell you where it's actually going to go, and then give you the safety of the location where it's going to go. So the intent is rather than just training employees, uh, we can give them something so that they can preview links. They can actually test them before they go uh, to it. And the other additional uh, advantage of this is anytime there's a yellow, a cautious link that may be unknown or that we're still researching, uh, which is really where a lot of these links that are getting into people's emails, that's the status they're in. They're in an unknown state. Uh, they're new. They haven't been uh, analyzed. So we can warn people. And anytime somebody actually does try to click on it, we can apply policy and say, you're not allowed to go there uh, because it's still being scanned or something along those lines. But really the key is that users now get that indicator and, anal and the analyst or IT team gets real-time feedback about what people are seeing and what they're actually clicking on. Yeah, I like so, that when you get a suspicious link. I'm like, I, I don't want to open that. Can someone else open that and tell me if something bad happens? Exactly. I mean, do you have a do you have plan or have a sandbox technology, um, or do you just take that link and just kind of do an analysis, or do you actually go pull content from it and analyze it? So we have some sandbox. We're also integrated with several detection uh, technologies on the back end that are doing that as well. Mm -hmm. 
Um, and we're going to continue enhancing that capability as well. Yeah, because so, I like that. Because like sometimes you are suspicious, or even if the users get accustomed to, before I click this link in email, let me just go send it off and have someone else, or have a system analyze it and then report back to me. I think that's a great strategy. Thanks. Yeah, we're excited. I think one of the other areas that's important to realize is different businesses have different challenges with this as well. So we work with small businesses, mid-sized businesses, and enterprises. And the real reason for that is they, they have different needs. A small business owner, for example, I, I've, we work with, uh, with a lot of small business owners that actually, they, they've been fished. And their, their challenge is that somebody in their organization got fished. Their customers are now receiving fake invoices. They don't know which employee clicked it, which employee uh, had, had actually given away their information or when it happened. Uh, what they do know is that a couple of weeks later, they start getting fake invoices from their customers. And it's this vicious cycle. So as a small business, you're not necessarily going to have somebody sitting there staring at it all the time. But at least now we can give an indicator and say, uh, this employee saw this, um, maybe even this employee saw this, click through it, and you need to respond pretty quickly to go help them, right? So it's not, it's not always, you know, we're doing the best we can to naturally prevent it. But if it does happen, the other key is having the information to respond quickly. And for the different stages of business, as you grow, maybe you have somebody paying attention to it, but uh, we need to be able to help the small businesses and the mid-sized businesses who don't have those security personnel. Mm. Yeah. Matt? What kind of trends are you seeing right now with all this remote workforce? Uh, obviously we hear in the news, phishing campaigns are going up. So I, I assume there's an increase in, in traditional phishing emails, but are we also seeing a move to some of these other platforms like social media and, and other areas? What kind of what's going on right now? Absolutely. So phishing has increased across the board. Um, I mean, I've even noticed it just from my personal email. There's a lot more phishing attempts actually landing in my email uh, because they're getting really good at this. Um, the the other areas where we're seeing an increase is, for example, LinkedIn. Um, so the when you get a message from LinkedIn, it could be somebody who's just connecting with you, or maybe it's somebody who's actually trying to fish you, and they include a link to a fictitious pro product or something. Um, same thing on Facebook, same thing, uh, basically on all social media is it's just a communication medium. So if you think about it as, uh, if, how do we protect the different communication mediums that exist and how do we monitor, uh, how, how quickly those attacks are going up? Um, I think at least the organizations we've talked to, most of them don't have very good visibility into that today. And so we're starting to get some of that visibility and, and continuing to increase that. But the, uh, a lot of the organizations don't have visibility into that today. So uh, I think those are some numbers that we're going to see continue to increase. Yeah, I've noticed some very interesting um, attacks at my phone, for example, right through um, iMessage. It's like, wait a minute, I don't know who that is. I'm just going to delete it. I'm not going to click on it. And, and they try to craft it like, oh, here's your order status or your updated tracking information. But you don't. You look at it and like, wait a minute, I don't, I don't think I gave people my phone number. So I, I'm, I'm seeing really interesting shift, uh, not only an increase in email, because I get a ton of it. Paul gets even more mm -hmm. than I do. I don't know how it keeps up. But I'm seeing that <laughs> shift over even into my phone and iMessage and right. some of the uh, other paths. Yeah, oh yeah, absolutely. The, the other, that's a, absolutely an area that's increased a lot is text message, SMS phishing. It's... It's gone through the roof. We actually just released a, a free product that you can forward any uh, any link from a text message and we'll respond as well because this it's got to be more real time. Uh, the idea that we're going to prevent people from ever seeing this, I, I think uh, I think we need to basically look at it as they're going to see it and we need to make sure that they're protected. Well, and you know, Terry, you hit, you hit a great point because when you get a, a link that's I mean any link should be suspicious right right now the users are like I, I don't know I don't want to wait for someone to take a look at this right having a service where they mm -hmm. can do that is is great yeah well and shortened links have have really made it more difficult for people to know what they're clicking on yeah 
Now, what about targeted um, campaigns, right, that maybe aren't requiring a link, but they're trying to get you to transfer funds, for example? How do you uh, handle those situations? Yeah, so those are a little bit more difficult. Uh, we focused on links at first, and we'll be working more into the language processing in, in those areas as well. Uh, the, we basically are taking the approach that most of the phishing attacks that are uh, that are really uh, getting in and getting people's credentials, a lot of those are coming from uh, a link. So we focused there uh, and with the intent to move into those other spaces as well. But it's absolutely an area. You know, there's a lot of BEC scams. There's a lot of mm. a lot of gift card scams that they will just use those messages. So I, I think you still have to rely a lot on uh, education for that. But we can we can find ways to interact with people and make that easier. Mm. Yeah, we were talking yesterday on Security and Compliance Weekly on extortion cases. Uh, and ransomware and uh, fraud, wire transfer fraud, are like the two highest uh, claims right. on cyber insurance policies. That this is where the activity seems to be right now. It's where a lot of the money is going to, for sure. Absolutely. Uh, any uh, anything else you want to share with our audience, Terry? No, I mean we're just excited to be here. Excited to to be able to help. Uh, I think one of the Again, this is about protecting people. It's about making a more secure culture for our people. And uh, I, I think that it's, and for the security teams, you know, I've been in the security industry a long time and I was on the other side helping respond to these things. And it's, I think it's really important that we start looking at this as, you know, how do we build these cultures of, a, or a more secure culture within companies so that people feel like they're included and not like they're going to get their hands slapped every time they get that phishing simulation test uh, so that we can really start getting the information we need to respond faster. Uh, how do people try this out and, and how is it like packaged uh, for consumption? So it is, we're a, uh, we're a subscription service and you can sign up on our website. Uh, we actually have a COVID response effort right now. We're, we're letting companies use it for a year for free uh, on our light product. Um, that essentially lets people have the agent installed and uh, basic information. Uh, we have some advanced analytics on our professional version, but uh, go try the light version and, and we're open for feedback. We're always, we're here to help. Fantastic. And what's the website, Terry? So you can go to fishcloud.com. It's P-H-I-S-H cloud, so C-L-O-U-D.com. Sweet. Terry, thanks so much for appearing on Enterprise Security Weekly. Thank you, guys. Really appreciate it. And with that, we'll take a short break and come back with our final interview, Tim Williams. Stay tuned. <laughs> 